Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll be adding a second drive to a 2011 or 2012 Mac Mini using the OWC SSD DIY kit. We've already gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the Mac Mini, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to flip the Mac Mini over. Rotate the bottom cover counterclockwise until the two white dots are aligned. You can then gently lift the cover off. Gently pull outward on the memory retaining clips until the top module pops up. Then, gently pull it straight out. Repeat the process for the lower module. Next, use your Torx T6 screwdriver to loosen these three screws that hold the fan in place. Once you've done that, gently lift the fan up and to the side to reveal the fan connector. Use your nylon pry tool to gently lift up on the connector to detach it from the logic board. You may then set the fan aside. Next, remove these three 2mm hex screws and these two Torx T8 screws. If you don't have a hex wrench, you can use your Torx T8 to remove the hex screws as well. If you do, use a light touch to avoid stripping the screws. Gently slide the antenna grate out and hold it off to the side. The airport cable is attached at this point and can gently be lifted free. You can then set the antenna grate aside. Detach this screw near the back of the Mac Mini, then gently slide the cowling out and set it aside. Next, use your nylon pry tool to gently detach the SATA connector. Then, remove this screw near the rear of the logic board with your Torx T6 screwdriver. You can then lift up on the IR cable gently with your nylon pry tool to detach it. Insert your logic board removal tool into these two holes. Then, gently pull back on the tool to slide the logic board towards the back of the Mini. That will give you enough room to disconnect the power supply connector from the logic board. You should then be able to remove the logic board completely. Next, remove these two Torx T6 screws which hold the power supply and drive bracket in place. You can now reach in and pull the hard drive out of the Mini. Slide the small retaining clip out from under the socket. Then rotate the power socket itself 90 degrees counterclockwise. You can then slide the power supply out of the Mini. Once you've done that, you can lift the carrier up and out of the Mini, being careful not to damage the IR sensor board in the process. Install the four rubber grommets into the four holes on the carrier. Next, attach the SATA connector that came with your kit to your new hard drive. Position the drive so that the SATA cable is on top of the drive and on the opposite side of the bracket from the IR sensor. Set it into place and secure it by inserting the four screws that came with the kit through the grommets and into the drive itself. Slide the carrier unit back into the Mac Mini, making sure to line up the holes in the carrier with the receptacles on the Mini's case. We can now slide the power supply back into place, making sure this tab on the end of the power supply slides into this slot in the case. Secure the carrier and the power supply back into place using the Torx T6 screws that held them in earlier. Place the power socket back into the unit and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Then, slide the retainer clip back in to hold it in place. You can slide the logic board about two-thirds of the way back into the Mini. Line the power cable up and push the logic board forward until you can plug the two together. We can now replace the original drive back into the Mini. The two mounting pins on the drive will need to go into these two grommets. It may take a little maneuvering to seat the drive correctly. 
After making sure no cables are trapped underneath, you can now slide the logic board all the way in, pushing along the rear edge if necessary. Reconnect the IR connector and the SATA cables by lining them up over the respective slots on the logic board and gently snapping them into place. Then, reattach the Torx T6 screw near the rear of the logic board. Then, slide the cowling back into place and reattach the lower screw that holds it in. To reattach the connector on the airport antenna with the connector on the board, simply line the two up and press them together. You can then slide the antenna grate back into place and maneuver it so it sits flush. Reattach the three hex screws around the edge. If you're using your Torx T8 screwdriver to do this, you need to be extremely careful not to tighten them too hard or you'll strip the screws. Then, attach the two Torx T8 screws that hold the hard drive to the grate. Reattach the fan cable to its connector on the logic board. Set the fan into place, making sure this screw goes through its proper hole on the logic board and tighten the three screws that hold it in. You may now replace the memory. The notch on the memory modules line up with the pins in the memory slot. Place the first module into the lower slot at about a 40 degree angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. Put the bottom cover onto the Mini, making sure that both the white dots line up. Then, rotate the bottom cover clockwise until the black and white dots are aligned. You may now flip your Mini over, hook it back up, and turn it on.